Audiobook Title A Tale of Steel and Gunpowder Chapter 64 by Pixie Tokaizaki 14 This work belongs to author, Pixie Tokaizaki 14 Source, Royal Road and ScribbleHub.com Chapter 64, Breach and Clear Part 3 the last two hallways don't have anything noteworthy. Only that it was the same as the main hallway they branched off from. That's the last one. We should check every single room here to see if they kept Amiria in this area, Nira said as she relaxed her muscles on the trigger and pointed her shotgun downward. Agreed, everyone, pick a hallway door and see where it leads. If you find trouble, yell for help, Gareth said as he positioned himself in front of the first hallway and I sometimes thought I was the leader of this party, Eric said to himself as he chose the second hallway. Good luck everyone, Hildia then picked hers, which was the third. I'll go in this one, Nira aimed the shotgun in front of her as she walked towards the fourth hallway. Good luck, sis, Ellie said as Nira walked past her. You too, Nira replied, which only Ellie heard. Ellie then positioned herself in the fifth hallway. I guess I don't have any choice. Shale said to herself as she walked down the last hallway near the large door. As Nera walked down the hallway, she heard the footsteps of her teammates slowly fade away. When they were completely gone, all she could see in front of her was a wooden door with metal pieces to reinforce it. She prepared her shotgun on the right, and with her left, she slowly opened the door. She was met with a foul stench that threatened to make her dinner come out the way it came in. Mofu jumped down from her shoulder as he couldn't take the smell with his nose. Mofu, go meet me in the central hallway. I think this may be harmful to you since your nose is a lot more sensitive than mine, Nira said as she faced the small fox. Mofu, she heard him say before his secondary colors changed to greed as he slowly walked back towards the main hall. Nira then turned back, and when she noticed there was no danger, she fully opened the door and what was inside would have traumatized anyone. What the hell? Inside was a small room, it was dark, and the only available light that was coming through was from the door Nero had just opened. She covered her nose with her forearm as she stepped inside. Under her feet was a pool of blood. When she kneeled down to confirm whether the dark, crimson liquid was indeed blood, she only saw a torch that was half burned. She picked up the unlit torch and decided to light it with the emergency doom slime core she always carried. She picked up a bullet from her bandolier and struck it against the core. The resulting sparks reignited the torch, which allowed her to see everything that was inside the room. Picking up the torch, she looked around and cringed at what she saw. Bodies. She saw multiple dead bodies lying on the ground. It's a slaughter she said to herself as she examined the bodies with her eyes only. Some of the bodies were in varying stages of decay, some already having maggots inside their bodies. They're all half-naked, it seems to be that they looted everything they could have gotten. She then kneeled down in front of a body that was lying on its side, which was in better condition than the rest. <laughs> a stab wound in the neck is the primary cause of death. There are no signs this victim fought back. She then turned the body with its belly facing downward. She then traced her fingers down the body's back, and she found something disturbing. A small pentagram was carved out on the victim's lower back. Now I definitely know we're dealing with the same cult as the one in Redfield, she said to herself as she stood up and examined other bodies inside the room. They all have a pentagram on the same area as the first body. This can't be a coincidence she said to herself as she turned her back against the center of the room and exited. Before exiting, she turned her head back to the bodies and muttered the words, Peace to the fallen. Before she exited, she closed the door behind her and walked back toward the main hallway. When she arrived, she also noticed that everyone was back and was talking with one another. When Eric noticed Nira, he motioned for her to come and join them. Mofu was lying down on the ground near the edge of the room with his nose scrunched up. It was probably the stench of the room she just went into. Nira, what did you find? We only found old empty cells on ours with no sign of Lady Amiria, Eric said. I found bodies, piles of bodies. They are all in different stages of decay, Nira said, which left everyone in shock. How many? Gareth questioned, his gaze as stern as ever. I counted fifteen. They all have something in common, a pentagram carved on their lower back area, Nira reported, which made Gareth scratch his chin. 
Why would they want to do that? Shale asked with confusion. My guess is there's some sort of sacrifice for the demon summoning. Eric voiced his opinion. No. Why would they keep the bodies in the first place if they have already tried multiple times for a successful summoning? And why put a pentagram on their bodies? Nira said while she rubbed her chin. Hey guys, you may want to check this out Ellie, who was examining a body they had killed earlier, said motioning for them to come near her. They went beside Ellie as Eric kneeled down and slowly pulled hood of the body and what they saw on the lowered back made the group even more curious. Another pentagram. Eric said slowly, W what could it mean? Hildia said as she clutched her staff. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's not good Eric said as they all stared at the pentagram. 